Welcome back to this second video on the key principles of permaculture. In this second lesson, you will learn two important sets of principles that characterize permaculture, the attitudinal principles and the home grants design principles. Along with ethics, permaculture revolves around some principles that are the foundation for the methods of design and act as checks and balances so that even the most complex project or system is simultaneously regenerative for man and nature. The permaculture design principles can be applied to any location, climate and culture, and they allow us to design the most efficient and sustainable human habitat and food production systems. Each design principle is based on a conceptual framework supported by sound scientific principles. When these principles are brought together, it is possible to establish design systems that consider whole systems, parts of them, and how they interact. The principles of permaculture are listed into three categories. Attitudinal principles, home greens design principles, additional design principles. The attitudinal principles reflect permaculture movements care about design and people. Therefore, it is worth highlighting them since they have an effective application during the design process and life itself. Some attitudinal principles are listed on this slide. Everything influences everything. Everything works both ways. The only limit we have is imagination. Work with and against. Think global and act local. No action. Think three and do one. No fun, no permaculture. The problem is the solution. Be lazy. Let nature work for you. Start from your doorstep. Cooperation and not competition. Work where it is more effective. Work once, think twice. Let's now analyze another set of principles characterizing permaculture, the home grants design principles. As you can see from this image, the 12 home grants principles are deeply interconnected with the three ethical principles of permaculture. Let's go into the details of each of them. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. The ability to read the landscape, interpret and transmit information about it had an important role in the evolution of humankind and our ability to survive and thrive in nature. In design, observation and analysis Proceed applied design at any scale, and it is an iterative process. The observation process concerns the understanding of patterns, details, energy flows, functions, elements, connections, material, and socio-cultural contexts. It is an important phase because it informs the design about the context in which the project is implemented. It works also as a useful guide to work with nature. Observation and interaction establish a bi-directional process between the subject and the object, in this case, the designer and the system. Since thoughts are often influenced by values, culture and preconceptions, the attitudinal principles can help in avoid getting trapped in dualistic thinking. Design is based on calculated reality. For example, if we need to design a system to catch water, we would have to observe how rains fall in a barrel from a roof. Vision is not seeing things as they are, but as they will be. Permaculture designers must be prepared to see opportunities everywhere because permaculture is the ultimate sustainability check to regenerate natural ecosystems and human culture. Observation and analytical skills are essential 
to see opportunity by understanding contemporary socio-ecological, economic, and political structures, paired with technical vocabulary and community leadership skills. This principle is about flexibility and adaptation, which are necessary skills to reach resilience by anticipating situations and planning ahead for them. Make hay while the sun shines. Energy is at the heart of life. It is involved in every aspect of our lives. For example, we can catch the sun through a solar system and store heat in water through a boiler, or we can use roofs to catch rainwater and store it in tanks. People are a form of energy too, so creating conditions to people's wellness is a way to keep this energy. This principle encourages us to design ways to capture the forms of energy that enter in the system and retain as much as possible. Among the most relevant activities of making, there should be the adaptation of the landscape to fulfill various functions concerning the storage and utilization of large quantities of energy, materialized into natural capital and infrastructure like timber, orchards, dams, compost, etc. You can't work in an empty stomach. This principle suggests that we should produce a tangible yield with a system under our care. Bill Mollison believed that the yield of a system is theoretically unlimited. The limit might be the imagination and creativity of the designer. Permaculture does not adopt the conventional monocultural production technologies to produce yield, but creates added value using the project site's natural potential. An example could be creating a pond in a low and flooded area. Although reaching complete self-sufficiency is quite impossible, we should develop forms of production whose maintenance does not exclusively depend on external inputs and, at the same time, become participants in local exchange systems that keep the social fabric strong. Make lots of small mistakes. Fail fast. Complex and resilient systems evolve through integration and adaptation to tensions that they might encounter along the process. Self-analysis is the simplest self-feedback. We should define our current reality, our needs and process to fulfill them. It is not relevant if it relates to us or the exterior, but feedback must be taken with an open heart. Experience is essential before jumping in headfirst into a large-scale project. Renewable resources and services have the capacity to recover and renew themselves through natural processes without the necessity to reinvest non-regenerable inputs for their creation and in a reasonable amount of time. For this reason, they are a passive income. Permaculture endeavors to use renewable resources to create diverse systems with high productivity and resilience in time. This permaculture principles honors the abundance and the value of natural resources and ecosystem services with the aim of reducing consumption and dependence on non-renewable resources. An example is the natural purification and oxygenation of water through natural flow, streams, natural dams, and ponds. Waste not, want not. In nature, waste does not exist. It is a concept introduced by man with the advent of linear processes that focus exclusively on the consumption phase. This principle encourages simplicity and taking the responsibility for our consumption footprint and pollution by considering waste as a resource and an opportunity. In natural systems, all processes are cyclical, so someone's waste is a resource to someone else. We can derive the following operation guidelines. Design with the entire life cycle in mind. Any structure or object used has a life that goes from the extraction phase to the exhaustion of its functionality. Getting information about the origin of the material, the functioning of the object, and its dismantlement process 
it's useful to identify the waste produced and to keep it under control. Refusal and reduction of unnecessary consumption. Reuse objects to remove material from landfills. Repair objects is a natural process while their maintenance contributes to extend their lives. Recycling. It happens constantly in natural systems where substances are decomposed into the simplest elements. The application of natural design principles to biodegradable material could greatly reduce the negative impact of industry on the environment and diminish the pressure on non-renewable resources. Can't see the forest from the trees. Permaculture takes inspiration from natural and social patterns for conceptualizing, processing and utilizing system thinking. They act as frameworks and ways of ordering things through which we can organize a highly complex system into its components and subdivisions. After observing the basic patterns of a complex system, we go deeper and look at interdependencies, interactions and processes among its elements, the type of energy consumed and produced, cycles, their frequency, etc. So permaculture is about analyzing the master pattern and identifying those elements that naturally and effortlessly can fit into the system. An example of patterns and frameworks is the pattern of time and scale of intervention, while an example of patterns and their use can be the use of forest ecology as a model for soil building and food production. Healthy ecosystems are based on meaningful, qualitative and beneficial relationships and connections among their elements. Permaculture aims to integrate elements in a polarity where the needs of one element can be met by another. Permaculture tries to identify how the waste from one assembly of elements can be turned into power or fuel for another assembly with different characteristics. The resilience of the system requires that each important element for the functioning of the system can fulfill several functions and offer positive redundancy to the system. In this way, if an element fails to deliver, it can be complemented by another. Consequently, permaculture considers elements, their functions, but also their placement and interrelations to predict the system's evolution and life cycles. An example of functions is a flock of chickens that, through its nature of behavior, can offer us brilliant company, wonderful clucking, eggs, warmth, pest control services, while they also need elements to express themselves comfortably and in good health, such as a balanced diet, shade, wind protection, posture, shrubbery, protection from predators, etc. Small is beautiful. This principle invites simplicity and responsibility for human and material resources. Small and slow solutions are easier to implement than large and revolutionary ones. Large-scale projects require experience and might be discouraging to undertake without solid project management skills. Start off with smaller-scale projects. For example, try to design your terrace or backyard and try to form a group and create a community garden. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversity is critical for increasing resilience and offering stability and protection. Permaculture teaches the importance of adopting diversity of approaches to design. A way to reinforce our systems is by using a variety of plants, animals, structures and functions with a variety of roles and relationships. Diversity can also act as an insurance policy against uncertainty and can support the evolution of the system or the harvest. It is favorable to find the right balance between natural ecosystems, which are diverse and offer modest but steady yield, and management-intensive ones, 
which yields faster but with higher investment costs. The edge is where the action is. Don't think you're on the right track just because it's a well-beaten path. The edge is the intersection of two environments. It is the most diverse place in a system where the energy and materials accumulate or are translated. The transition zone between two ecosystems is the place where we can find the greater productivity and diversity. Many species, including humans, prefer to inhabit the edges because of the abundance of habitat and nutrients. However, competition for resources, nutrients, light and water is also more intense in that zone. Trees are a perfect representation. Most of the life takes place in the foliage on the border between air and biomass and at ground level between air and earth. The presence of two environments, air and soil, increases the opportunities for life forms, offers resources and promotes processes. In this zone, we can consequently find greater biodiversity. We've come to the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching.